Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Catherine. If you're new here, I am currently a second year PhD student studying history at The Ohio State University. I specifically work on the cultural history of war. You guys asked for this. That's a lie. Well, one person asked for this video, but I am going to do a little bookshelf tour. Now, I don't have the same amount of books that I have seen a lot of other history or even just like academic booktubers um have but you know it's a work in progress books are very expensive some of the books i have on my shelf are very very expensive so i get a lot of books from libraries and i try just to limit my purchases to books that i can't find anywhere else and i need for class or books that are super useful to my dissertation or for generals i'll just take you through what each section is on my bookshelf so on the top shelf is pretty much all of my books, either about France or World War I. Um, I do have some World War I books on the bottom shelf, but since most of my work is on France and World War I, that is what we have up top in this section. So this whole first section is pretty much French history slash World War I. Then we have all my French dictionaries. One of the biggest books I have in my library is Histoire de la Nouvelle Aquitaine. So I actually lived in La Nouvelle Aquitaine. It's a region in France. I lived in this very small village um, named Fumel for a year. That's where I taught English. This was in 2017 to 2018. So it was right after I graduated college and I decided to be an English language teaching assistant. I taught at a high school and a middle school. And at the end of my time in France, the school presented me with this giant history of the region. They all signed a really nice card. To be honest, I think I cracked open this book like one time. I feel like this is like one of those really nice coffee table books, um, but it has really pretty pictures in it um, and nice history. So it's not really for my work, but I do love it. And it holds a special place in my heart because it reminds me of the time that I was living in France. So another special book that I have is called Another World 19th Century Illustrated Print Culture. This is another book that I've only cracked open about two times, um, but I got this book at the end of my master's program at NYU. So I got my master's in French studies at NYU at the Institute of French Studies. And at the end of the program, we have a book ceremony, I guess, where each advisor presents a book to their students at the end and it's supposed to somewhat have to do with your research or your interest. I don't really know why my advisor saw this book and thought of me um, but again a really nice book maybe another coffee table book. There's a lot of great illustrations in here. Um, obviously it's all about print culture so that's fun but again not a book that I really crack open but it's fun that I have this. Then we get into a nice little section of books that I've had to read in French for school. So I have Le Mariage de Figaro, I had to read that last semester. We have The Stranger by Albert Camus in both French and in English. I have Père Gorio in both French and in English. And then I have Bellamy. And we have this book called Une Histoire de France par les villes et les villages. And I bought this book when I thought that I just needed to read more books in French. I literally have an airline ticket in here. Where was I going? Oh, I was going to Denmark. That's so fun. Uh, but this book is basically takes a look at the history of France, but in specific villages for each chapter. So I love local history and I thought that was super cool. So I bought it. Let's talk about some of my World War I books. So I have a classic classic book 1418 under under the i have a very classic book 1418 understanding the great war by stefan audouin rousseau and annette becker this book uh is cited literally everywhere it's on lots of different cultural aspects of world war one in france and it is kind of a game changer and everyone cites it so i had to get this one the next book that I have is written by my advisor. It's called August 1914, France, the Great War in a Month That Changed the World Forever. I thought it would be fun to have a book by my advisor. I have a few of, of his books, um, but yeah, it's a good book if you're interested. It kind of just looks at August in 1914 and tracks the mobilization process. Okay, then we have a few books that are specific to my research and they are all about letters, 
writing letters to the front, writing letters to home. Then we have another classic book, um, Women During the Time of the War, uh, written by Francoise Thibault, uh, kind of a really big historian in terms of French history. I have not fully read the book, but I cite from it in a lot of my papers. Now we have my crowning jewel, probably one of the most expensive books I own. This book was, I believe, $110. I got it for Christmas this past year. It is called Capital Cities at War, Paris, London, Berlin, 1914 to 1919, volume two, a cultural history. I believe there are three volumes of this, um, but this is a book that I really, really wanted, but it's super expensive. So I got my parents to buy this for me for Christmas. And it's great, really interesting read. I cite from it, a few chapters from it in a few of my papers. Um, and it was edited, one of the editors is Jay Winter. And if you haven't heard of Jay, Jay Winter, very big in cultural history, very big in history of war. And that brings us to my next two books, War Beyond Words and Sites of Memory, Sites of Mourning. Both of these books are on my generals list. And yeah, it talks a lot about memory, remembrance, language, culture, good books to have. Okay, and the last book I'm gonna get into on this shelf is Une Histoire de Guerre, Une Histoire de Guerre, A History of War um, from the 19th century to today. This was actually edited by my advisor and there's some pretty big names in this. He got this for me as kind of like a welcome to Columbus gift when I first got here on our first meeting. And that's really, really special. And I'm really glad I have this. Actually, one of my old professors who was working here and then left for Duke after my first semester here also has uh, something written in here, Jennifer Siegel. So I think that's really cool. Okay, now we are going down to our bottom shelf. Groupings are kind of weird, I guess. So the first three books are more like survey books. I have one on understanding world societies. It was actually a textbook I had to get for my empire class. We did a project on how empires presented and represented in textbooks. So I have that one. Then I have Empires and World History, another book I needed for my empire class. And then we have The Idiot's Guide to European History. I think I bought this in high school when I was studying for my AP exams. We're gonna change angles so that I can see my books a little better. So then on the bottom shelf, we also have a couple of classic books. We have Imagined Communities by Benedict Anderson. We have Hobsbawm, Nations and Nationalism. Those two books I read when I was a junior in college uh, for my international studies major and I got super obsessed with both of them. Now I'm not that obsessed with them, but they really got me into thinking about the formation of nations and that was a big part of my beginning stages of graduate formation. So they still hold a near and dear spot in my heart. And we have just a couple of random books on revolution. Um, we have Baumgart's Imperialism. We have All Quiet on the Western Front and then the sequel, The Road Back. I don't know if any of you guys knew that All Quiet on the Western Front had a sequel, but it does and I had a reader for class. Then we have two books on emotion. We have this book, What Nostalgia Was, War, Empire, and the Time of a Deadly Emotion. I haven't fully read this book, but it was on my reading list for my minor field in military history. And this tracks the idea this talks about how the term nostalgia has been treated over time and how our understanding actually changed. And nostalgia used to be thought of as an actual medical illness and medical disease for soldiers who were fighting in war. And I think it's super fascinating. So as soon as I read the introduction, I went and bought this right away last summer because I think that's super fascinating to see how concepts and terms change over time and how illnesses change over time and how they're classified. And similar to that, I have Fear, A Cultural History by Joanna Burke. Joanna Burke has written several different books on cultural history. And the history of emotions is something I really wanna include in my project. So these two are kind of my foundational text for, understand, for beginning to understand how emotions, the concept of emotions can change over. Then we have kind of my World War II section. So I have several different books on the Nazi state, ideologies of race, 
Then I have just like a few random books that I needed for a class that I took with my advisor. And then we get to our gender section. So I have writing gender history, which is kind of just an overview of the historiography. I had to read this for a class on women's history. And then we have a fairly famous book within women and gender history called Making Sex, Body and Gender from the Greeks to Freud by Thomas Lecure. And it kind of tracks how sex and gender was understood and how we went from a one sex model to a two sex model. So if you're interested in that or want to know what I'm talking about, go Google this book and check it out. Then we have two books that I probably cite the most of. Um, we have Susan Grazel's Women's Identities at War. Susan Grazel is an icon to me. I had the wonderful chance to talk with her about my project last year. She was very kind, um, very, very welcoming. Um, and I cite her book in pretty much every paper I write. And same with this book, Behind the Lines, Gender and the Two World Wars. In the introduction, the editors introduced this idea of a double helix to understand gender in a time of war. And they basically explain that even though gender roles might change during war, the role of the male always takes cultural, political, economic primacy. So say during World War I, men were going to the front women might be might have entered into new roles uh, like working in factories, uh, working as nurses. However, women were still behind. So as men were moving forward, women were still moving forward, but they were on the other strand. And so they were constantly behind men. So it's a concept I like to use in my papers. Uh, and I bought this book so that I can more easily reference it. Okay, the last book that I'm going to talk about is the very last book on my bookshelf. It is Jean-Paul Sartre being and nothingness and, and I wanted to share this one because it has a very cute slash funny story so one day I was a few months into dating my partner and I really needed to go to the library to get some books and we get to the library and realize it was closed because of like some holiday and I was very upset because I just wanted some book we decided to go to this bookstore in Columbus called the book loft because he really wanted to make sure that I could get a book that day because I just really wanted one and he offered to buy me a book. So this was actually the first thing that he ever got me. It's hilarious because I had him buy me a book on existentialism. So like, I don't know what that says about, uh, about me or about us, but then he wrote me a little note on the inside and it was so cute. And it turned what was kind of a crappy morning into a very cute moment. So I will always remember this book as the first thing he ever got me. So I kind of love that. Having filmed this, I now have several observations. One, I need to read a lot of the books in here because I spent money on them and clearly there are still a lot I haven't read, but they seem interesting. So I stand by the purchases. I just need to actually read them. Also though, point 0.1.1, point one, um, I'm studying for generals right now, so I'm reading mostly books that aren't on my bookshelf. I'm working through 200 books right now, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of grace. And point two is that I need a bigger bookshelf, and point three is there's still a lot of books that I want to buy and books that I keep returning to that I just haven't put the investment in because a lot of academic books can run anywhere from 50 to $100, which seems insane. I try and find some secondhand, but it's honestly kind of hard to do that. You can't walk into a half price bookstore and find a lot of the books that I'm searching for. Uh, so it is what it is. I try and get a lot of books from the library or find online resources. Sometimes I resort to buying them on Kindle, but I much prefer having a book in my hands. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, especially the one person who asked for this. This was kind of chaotic. Uh, but yeah, I had fun kind of trying to reorganize my bookshelf and understand why I put the books in the order that I did. If you guys have any questions or suggestions for what you want to see next, don't forget to leave a comment down below and make sure you subscribe to keep seeing more grad school videos. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!